to New York City, where the choking death of a man on the city's subway continues to draw national attention. Video there shows riders trying to subdue Jordan Neely, and a 24-year-old Marine ends up holding Neely in a headlock for at least three minutes. Police say that Marine was questioned and was released without charges. Now, the New York City Medical Examiner's Office has ruled Neely's death a homicide, saying that he died as a result of compression of the neck caused by the chokehold. I do want to talk more about all of this, so let's bring in Lisa Ever. She is with our Fox 5 New York team and is following the story. Lisa, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. No, my pleasure, Josh. I mean, th this story is basically the topic of conversation everywhere you go in New York City. Everyone is talking about it because it touches on so many important points and so many sore points, especially with subway riders. There were protests last night uh, for calling for the arrest of 24-year-old Daniel Penny, the ex-Marine, who put that chokehold on Jordan Neely. They were on the subway tracks there calling for the arrest. And you can see the police officers were there. There was quite a large crowd. There have been protests all week long about this. But the other thing that has been running parallel to this has been very frustrating to myself and a lot of my colleagues is there's been very little official information coming out about what the evidence is, what really happened here. We see what happened, obviously, in that horrific video where Jordan Neely is lying on the floor of that subway, that F train in Manhattan, and Daniel Penny is putting him in a choke hold and then you see the two other men that are there trying to hold him down now the video that you showed earlier that we're showing right now is of him as a michael jackson impersonator that was taken years ago neely is 30 year was excuse me may he rest in peace was 30 year 30 years old that video of him as a performer was taken many years ago and for a number of years he was known in the street performance community as a michael jackson impersonator but it seems that he's been on a trajectory because of home because of uh, substance abuse, which was involved in one of the arrests that he was uh, char charged in, that his life had really devolved to the point that it led to him being on that F train, crying for what, you know, asking for water, asking for food, saying he needed a place, place to help. Now, initially, the NYPD told us that there was an altercation. There were 911 calls that were made from the incident where they said there had been a fight. So we don't know exactly what happened. The, the big question, of course, in many people's minds is whether or not there was actual physical intimidation. Unfortunately, we've become quite accustomed in New York City to being verbally harassed on the subway trains. But there's a big, you know, there's a, quite a line in many people's minds between defending yourself against somebody actually physically threatening you, coming to take your property, going to touch you, laying a hand on you, you know, anything of that nature, that's, there's a certain line between that and aggressive screaming and shouting, which unfortunately, because of the mental health crisis that uh, Jordan Neely's family says he had been suffering for some time, that he was having a crisis. And most people, when they can, they try to get away from that. You know, you walk to the other end of the subway platform, but it's not like being on the streets when you're in that subway. You're in a confined environment. You're locked in a car. Um, a lot of times the, the train is moving. There's no place for you to go. You just have to deal with it. So what's happening now is the Manhattan DA is investigating this and they are uh, expected. A lot of people say and we believe that they, they may actually go as far as to convene a grand jury and basically let the grand jury decide whether or not charges should be brought against 24-year-old Daniel Penny. And of course, this has become a racially charged case because here again, we see the hands, we see a unarmed black man dying at the hands of a white man. So that's obviously touching a nerve in many communities and with many New Yorkers as well. But by the same token, on the flip side, the other side is the rider's perspective. And we've had a lot of incidents where subway riders have been attacked by people who were mentally ill, having a crisis, and got physically violent. So that's that's where the situation is now. And then the authorities also pointed out pretty quickly on that Jordan Neely had been arrested more than 40 times for various offenses. A lot of them were minor, but more recently they included physical assaults. So there, a lot of this needs to go before a grand jury is what the legal experts are saying so that we know what happened. And we see what happened at the end of that incident where Daniel Penny took him, you know, took him in that chokehold. Medical examiner ruled he died from compression of the neck. 
a, a chokehold. And then, but there's a lot of other questions too about the 911 response, about were paramedics there fast enough? Uh, there, were there substances in his body? We don't know anything about that that might have contributed to it, which, which we've seen in previous high profile cases here in New York City, but many, many questions. Now, the attorneys for Daniel Penny have started to speak out. They say that he in no way, shape or form meant to do any kind of harm. He was just trying to, to calm the situation down to try to save himself and other riders from being attacked. So different riders have spoken out. Some have said, yes, they were threatened. Others have said, this is basically what happens on the New York City subway in 2023. Uh, it's to be expected that they didn't think their lives were in danger in, in any type of way but I think that that's you know these are these are all questions that would come before a grand jury but the other thing that's been very uh, unusual for this Josh I have to say is as covering a lot of law enforcement stories and crime stories as you know as we've talked about many times here on live now is that the police they gave they gave us this initial report which was pretty much the only report that we had about this that's another protest that you're showing right now that was at Washington Square Park uh, that that happened calling for the arrest of of the ex-marine daniel penny but one of the things they did say initially there was an altercation they did say there was a fight and so we're we're really trying to get a better handle on what were those moments leading up to those devastating final moments they see where where uh jordan neely was lying on the floor of that subway you know really ba basically struggling to breathe to stay alive so uh, that's what we hope will come out with the grand jury if there's any type of determination. But it, it's it's a very controversial case, and it's one where people seem very polarized. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, polarized along various lines. Some writers are saying, you know what, it's gone too too far. The system failed Jordan Neely. It's failing other people who individuals who are in his circumstances who have this kind of cascade of issues that end up, you know, turning them into something that they were never, you know, before. I mean. He was known as a beloved performer, but obviously, if you're on the streets, if you're not, if you need medication and mental health support and you're not getting it, if you're exposed to the types of substances that people can get their hands on on the streets, and you're just, you know, you're going, you're really going through it on pretty much every single level of human existence, you know, it's hard to stay calm. It's hard for people not to, to act in ways that they had not previously acted before. And then there was a tragedy very early on in his life at the age of 14, Jordan Neely, um, his, his mother his mother was killed. She was cut up in pieces, put in a suitcase, and he lost his mother at age 14 um, at the hands of an, a man who was convicted of killing her, who was her abuser. So you have to believe that there was a tremendous amount of uh, of trauma in that household as he was, you know, as he was coming up. So that's pretty much the latest here. But we're looking to see what will happen this week in terms of the. Uh, in, in terms of the Manhattan District Attorney's investigation and see what other information we can have. But but definitely, definitely unfortunate and a tragedy all the way around here, Josh. And the question, of course, if a grand jury is convened there, do we know how soon that could happen? It sounds like there's a lot of uh, mystery at this point as to when that grand jury could be convened to discuss this and, of course, whether charges will be filed. Well, I would, ex I would expect, yes, there's, there's talk that it could happen this week, but there's a lot going on, as you know, with the, with the Manhattan Grand Jury in terms of cases. I think what they will do is they will try to get all of their, uh, all of their information and preliminary interviews. I'm sure they have investigators right now that are talking to uh, as many people as they can get a hold of who were on that subway car. They'll be coming up with a timeline, uh, which they typically do in cases like this of what happened, when did he, when did Jordan Neely enter the subway car, when was uh, Daniel Penny on the subway car, do any other riders that were on that car have other video of other incidents, and then depending upon what the, you know, what the parameter is of their investigation, they may say there was a woman who came forward and with a previous encounter with him that was unpleasant on a subway train, if other things like that will start to take place. And again, Jordan Neely is the one who lost his life here, and I think we have to keep that in mind but i think on the by the same token we'll have to look at the other circumstances and that's what the district attorney will be looking at in order to see what if any charges are appropriate to file against daniel penny i think it's going to be a hard case for them to make if there's no other physical evidence of other videos of showing or, or other strong witnesses coming forward to say that he was attacked because it just you know it, it's just People were outraged by it, but by the same token, a lot of people are fed up with this type of harassment on the subway. So that's that's what you have here in New York, Josh. 
All right, Lisa Evers there with Fox 5 New York. As always, thank you so much for taking the time on this Sunday morning to join us and provide an update. That is a story that is obviously not going away, and we could have, as you mentioned, the grand jury convening at some point in the coming week. No, definitely. Well, Josh, thank you very much. We'll keep you posted, I'm sure.